Piratoons. Piratoons? Pirates like the balloons. Pirates that like cartoons. That drink their meat with a spoon. Wish I knew. But the strange title is a perfect introduction to the game, which is about pirates, but it has a zany, humorous approach to it, as you can also see from the art. Everything is very light, um, everything is very fun and amusing. It definitely is a game that, like in so many recent board games, depicts uh, being a pirate, going around and stealing other people's stuff as something light and fun and entertaining and, and that you laugh about and you have just a good time. In Santali, actually, all of these games tend to depict the main thing that pirates do as has looking for treasures rather than stealing stuff from others. But there are some people that do that. Here, in a certain sense, is Pirate Expeditions, uh, the prequel, because what the players are doing is not really to go around in the seven seas uh, stealing stuff and and pillaging and raiding, but uh, they build a ship. They build a ship, they are put together their crew, and pretty much, if you want, the game ends uh, when the raid begins. So players have several turns to create a powerful ship equipped with everything, with weapons, guns, um, ship with a lot of sails, other crew, um, or crew members, and when that is ready, then you evaluate the ships and you score points that way. This is achieved through a worker placement mechanics, but trust me, worker placement with a twist, worker placement done in a way that I had not seen anywhere else. Curious about it? Let's take a closer look. Each player starts with a pirate ship that is made of only two tiles and each player gets a crew of meeples. Your job in the game is to build the biggest, fastest, most badass pirate ship to turn your bathtub toy here into a respectable vessel that will be the terror of the seven seas. How do you do that? By adding tiles to your initial ship. There are two types of tiles. These small tiles represent the windows with guns and people looking out of the window. They represent sails, people sitting on the deck. And then you also have these other tiles that represent the structural improvements to your to your ship. These tiles allow you to increase the size of the ship and uh, these things bring variety to the stuff that you have on the ship. At the beginning of the game, you take all of these tiles, there's 48 of them, you put them all face down, you shuffle them together and you divide them in 8 face down stacks. And the game is divided in 8 turns, so each turn you will have one of these stacks. Here, what you see here is the treasure chest, which is made of two parts. One is a tray, you can see from the edge there, and one is a, a lid. At the beginning of each turn, so you take a stack of six of these tokens here and you place them face down on that board, on the treasure chest. And then you also take three of these tiles, usually they would be face down, you should not know what they are. And you put them there face down too. Then you close the treasure chest, and here is, if you're playing with kids, this part an adult should do. By holding the two parts very closely, you turn the thing face down. Well, you flip it, which means that now the tiles that you saw earlier are in here, and they are face up. So when I remove what used to be the bottom, now the tiles will be face up. And this is a worker placement um, game, uh, so simply when the tiles are available, players will place their meeples on the tiles that they want to add to their to their ship. Pretty standard, right? Yeah, couldn't be more wrong, because the way this is done is very original, very fun and very exciting. How does this work? Once the lid is lifted, Players will add their meeples and put it on top of the tiles that they want to acquire, but they will all do it at the same time. You don't take turns. This is pirates. Pirates don't like to wait. So everybody's just rushing to place the, their, their meeples at the same time. And just so that you know in advance, uh, if there are multiple meeples on a tile, the player that gets is the player that has majority. So it's perfectly legitimate that a player puts a, a meeple and that a player puts two meeples and you say, oh darn, they put two meeples. Then you rush to add two more meeples uh, and so you get three out of, of instead of two. Three against two. So it's very frantic, it's very frenetic. And you think, how long do you have to do so? Well, there is a timer 
and well, let's see. Let's simulate how it would be. First, somebody lifts this up, they throw it or something, and real quick, you turn the timer. Just to give a sense of how long the timer, you know what, just to give a sense of how long the timer takes, because you're there thinking about your strategy, how you can do them, maximize and optimize your chances, but this is the time that you have, ready? One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, 10 Mississippi, 11 Mississippi. You have approximately 11 Mississippi time. Perfect for, you have a player that always cripples each game with downtime make them play this game. It'll drive them nuts. It will, they will run away screaming and crying. But who cares? Because it's fun. So in 11 seconds, you're there putting things, uh, trying to get stuff. Darn, green has put some, darn, red has put more stuff there. I really want that tile and that thing and da da da. So it's frantic, it's frenetic, it's super fun and exciting. At the end of this, you evaluate the board. If there are ties on tiles, then nobody gets that tie. Or something important, the meeples that you did not send to the board generate coins. Each meeple that you did not use there turns into a doubloon that you get into your personal reserve. Then, as I said, ties don't count, and in all tiles where you have a majority, you get the corresponding tile. Suppose I uh, actually only had a majority on this tile here, then I simply grab it. Structural tiles are added to your board, and after you add them, you're also allowed then to switch them around, because you can see some of these tiles have half symbols here, and if possible, you're trying to match those with similar symbols because if you do so then you score extra points and you do not lose points because mix match tiles uh, make you lose points so this would be an okay configuration because i get a match there but i get a mismatch there oh well well you can't have everything so structural tiles are simply added to your ship which will become longer and longer then you have these other tiles that are added to different places of your ship but you need to have the corresponding place available so the sails are added to mast spaces and that would work that way. Then you have carters that stay on the deck or other elements that go on the deck and you need to have deck spaces available. Then you have three types of windows, the porthole, this other, well, the gun port, this window here, and this other one. It pretty much you identify as the square gray, the square yellow and red, and the and the round one. That's how I play with my daughters. So if you if you grab tiles of that kind, then you simply can place them on the corresponding windows if you have them available. Like, like this. That would all be cool and neat legal placements. So Basically, before the, uh, the treasure chest opens, you really need to have a clear idea what you want to do. You have just a few seconds to ascertain what's available, jump there and make corrections based on what other players are trying to take from you. Uh, really fun and exciting and the perfect solution against the perfect solution against the players that indulge in creating downtime and trying to to optimize their strategies too much it's pirates for pit's sake so players grab their stuff and then at the end it's possible that there will be some stuff left and the stuff that is left becomes available for an auction which is when um, when coins are important, suppose that there is, uh, there are some some tiles that are available for the auction. Then players may participate by hiding a certain amount of coins in their hand. Everybody stretches their hand out. Everybody reveals their hand. Oh, I have zero, so actually bluffing. Uh, but suppose that I had money in my hand. Players that have money, they they compare how much money they they offered for the auction. Ties are eliminated, so that's kind of tricky if because it may just be that by sheer luck or, or lack lack thereof of luck, you have the same amount as somebody else, and so those players do not participate to the auction. The ones that remain that did not tie with anybody else, they get to grab a tile. You start with the player that uh, that that committed the most gold. To the auction, the player grabs a tile, spends that gold, second player goes and grabs another tile, and so on and so forth. 
And this is really how a turn works, it's as simple as that. New tiles are made available face down, you flip the treasure chest, make it available, adrenaline rushes as the meeples jump on the board, you distribute the tiles and you place them on your ship, auction for tiles that may have been left behind, repeat that until the end of the last turn. At that point you score. And and you simply check how beautiful, efficient, and powerful your ship is. There are many, many scoring elements, that is, many moving parts that you need to worry about. Um, use score points for having the fastest boat, first and second fastest get points, richest pirates that has the most money at the end, again, point for first and second, and the biggest boat, again, first and second. Then connections. Correct connections give you two points, incorrect connections uh, between tiles lose you two points. Then other things that make you lose points, empty spaces, the boat with the most empty deck, the most empty gun ports, most empty quarter spaces and most empty portals, they all lose two points. Also the bow with the most total empty spaces loses two points. So don't just pile up tiles without worrying about anything. You want to have an efficient ship, not a huge ship which is too big for what you need it, need it for. Finally, you score points for set of tiles that you have. So player wins five points for each three matching tiles, exactly the same match. Four points for three different equipment tiles so place on the same kind of space. That would be three square windows, even if they have different people in them, uh, three round windows with different things in them. Finally, the player wins two points for each pair of identical tiles. You cannot use the sail tiles to score here. The sail tiles are the ones that you use to determine the fastest boat. And that's, and that's it. You score points and you see at that point uh, who has the boat that scores the most points in the game and that player that owns that boat is the winner of the game. I like this game a lot. It's just so viscerally, intensely fun. It's, it's worker placement the way it should be done. If I were allowed to only have one worker placement game in my collection, it would be this one. So now please start the flow complaints of, of the comments in which you tell me which are the better games that you would keep. And I'm glad that you would keep those, but I would probably keep this one to me. This is worker placement done right. Um, done in a fun, simple, intuitive way, without all of the cerebral optimization, without all the algorithmic thinking that many players bring to the table when it comes to worker placement. They have their ideal way of playing, they adjust it, they kind of like, they add and they start sub programs in their brain, respond to that, add that worker there. I can't play with those people. And I think this design would drive me nuts because it is visual, it is intuitive. You have 11 seconds, you have a picture in your mind of what you want to do and then it won't work. So you have to adjust there because of the players, because the tile that you wanted is not there, because of the players dump all their meeples where you wanted to have them. Then you had to adjust, go with your feelings, go with your guts, uh, deal with what you're left with. And then you have a second chance. You panic, you freak, then don't do anything or don't do much and then try to get something good at the auction because if you didn't commit many of your meeples you have more doubloons to spend at the auction. So yes, there is the there is the option, the, the option, not a good one, but it's a decent parachute for the player that freezes there. But just go and, and see what happens. It is just such a viscerally fun, amusing game. I really like it. Um, the scoring is a little convoluted, mind you, but I also like the fact that precisely because of this, it gives you many paths to victory many more that you can possibly analyze and rationally pursue in these crazy frantic parts of the game. So again, as the game progresses, you try to do different things and you try to adjust your strategy depending on what the other players are doing, what's available in any given turn. In a certain sense, so many ways of scoring also means that you will at least hit some of those here or there. It's hard not to score anything, but of course the winner is not the one that stumbles upon a set here or there. It is the one that managed to go with the flow, with this crazy flow of events and try to 
optimize and maximize opportunities better than, than other people. Um, so it still feels meritocratic, it still doesn't feel like it's down to luck because everybody actually is competing for the same resources uh, with the same resources. So luck is really not a factor. Luck tells you what's available that term, but that is something that affects everybody equally, not that you roll a 12 and I roll a 2 and then you have a big advantage because of that. Fun, simple, yeah, the score is a little convoluted, but I think it makes sense. Uh, it adds an interesting angle uh, to it. It doesn't clash with the absolute straightforward nature of the other elements of the design. A game that you can play with non, with casual gamers, with non heavily committed gamers, to them you simply give them a general thematic sense of how scoring works. I'm very sure that your, war, your your ship is not too big for your crew, uh, that you, however, have enough little windows open to place new stuff, uh, don't overstand your things, da, da, da. So you can explain to them logically with the gamers, you can get more technical, but it's a game that really can suit a large range of players. So it says here that you can play it eight years and up. I play with my two daughters, which are actually four and six. Yes, we were a little liberal with the timer. I gave them some extra time and sometimes when a tile was left behind, uh, we would just, me and the six-year-old would just decide to give it to the four-year-old because she's a young pirate, we said. She's still training as a pirate, so she needs some extra help. The four-year-old didn't mind at all. She was just like, no, I'm going to do it in just my way. I want to show you I can do it. She was just happy. Everybody was happy. And we had a blast. My daughters loved it. We just, I just took them some extra time. Uh, I just gave them some extra time in, in the phase that for adults should be brutally short. And the, the children, six and four, they were able to play, where they were able to enjoy it. We had a really, really good time. Pirate Tunes, uh, it's fun. It's worker placement done right. It's good production value, great components, everything looks great, everything is nice and sturdy. This box is quite heavy, for much heavier than you would think from the size, uh, because it's loaded with nice components, thick tiles, and really good quality components. And what's most important, a really good design that takes shapes or takes shape around those components. Fun game, exciting, really, really enjoyable. Pirate Tunes, I recommend it to uh, everybody who wants to play a game which is about, yes, creating sets and maximizing your workers, but in an environment which is just 10,000 times more fun than it is done in most of the games that rely on these very well known and familiar mechanics. Pirate Tunes by Stronghold Games two big thumbs up or a big thumb up and a hook whichever in any case great game